Welcome to the Martinez Cosmology Podcast, our podcast for talks and reflections on life, seen from the perspective of the Danish writer Martinez. My name is Penilla Rosell. I'm in Stockholm at the moment, and I will interview Mary McGovern today, who's in Copenhagen. Welcome, Mary. Thank you very much, Penilla. This is a little experiment. We hope that it will work, since we usually meet physically, but it's not always possible, and we so much wanted to record another podcast again, since we have had a break. And there's been a reason for that break. You have been away, haven't you? And we would like you to tell us something about it. You have been to San Francisco, and you have given lectures on Martinez's cosmology. So, would you like to tell us about it? Yes, I was uh, originally invited to give a talk about Martinez's little book, The Ideal Food, at the World Veg Festival in San Francisco on the 27th of October. And I said yes to that, and then found that there was another conference in San Jose around the same time. So I sent in an abstract to give a, a, a lecture there, and uh, the abstract was accepted. And there I talked about the ongoing evolution of human sexuality. And the reason I said yes to going so far, it felt like going to the other side of the planet, was that I had finished translating Levi's Boat, The Book of Life, Volume 5, and it was due to be published in October. And I thought, well, it was an appropriate time to take a couple of weeks out and go and present Martinez's ideas in California. So that's what I did. And that's absolutely fascinating. So you had two conferences and two very important topics. We have actually talked about those topics earlier in our podcast, haven't we? We talked about what Martinez writes about our sexual evolution. And then we also talked about his book, The Ideal Food, in our last podcast episode, the 17th episode. So we have touched upon these subjects, but he writes extensively about it. And it must have been difficult to present a summary of this in a context where perhaps nobody knew about Martinez. Yes, and in conferences like uh, like these, then uh, there are severe times restrictions. So in the Science and Non-Duality Conference in San Jose, I had 20 minutes to present Martinez's entire analysis of the whole of mankind's sexual evolution. So that's a tall order. And of course, they didn't know anything about Martinez in advance, so I had to say something about who he was. And um, at the Vegetarian Festival, I had half an hour, uh, which felt... Uh, like plenty of time after having only 20 minutes in San Jose. But there was there were serious time constrictions and there were for all the speakers, so we were more or less in the same boat. I understand. So we start with the first one then, the SAND conference. Perhaps you could just tell us what sort of conference is it? It's a conference where they try to bring together, as far as I could see, they were trying to bring together a spiritual view of life or various spiritual views of life and scientific views of life. I only managed to take part in one and a half days myself because it, the rest of it collided with the vegetarian festival in San Francisco. So um, I didn't hear any of the more scientific talks. So I had heard things that had to do with psychology and uh, the development of consciousness there was something about trauma, he, the healing of traumas, and um, yeah. It was a very wide program, but one of the main themes was sex and gender. And that's why I felt it was appropriate to offer them a lecture on the on ongoing evolution of human sexuality. Because that's what Levis book, The Book of Life, Volume 5, is about. It's about uh, the great variety of sexual states and behavior that we see and... Uh, it tries to explain what we're going through and tries to answer some of the questions that we have, like why is marriage increasingly unstable and why do people experience conflicting needs to express their creative and intellectual abilities and and their need to be good parents and spouses and so on. And, and why are some people attracted to the opposite sex? Why are 
others are attracted to their own sex or both sexes. So these are some of the issues that I try to take up in the in the talk. And do you also think that those things are what distinguish Martinez perhaps from from other lecturers at this conference? The overall topic is or the overall title is science and non duality. Yes. And that sounds in a way compatible with Martinez's work, but I guess there are also differences. What do you think is different if you compare Martinez's works with other things that you heard? Well, that's a difficult question because I heard such a small uh, selection of what was on offer because there were many parallel lectures and talks. So I think I didn't hear enough to give a fair answer to that question, but I think... The, the, if you look at the idea of non-duality, then Martinus certainly says that we are all one, that this idea that we are separate is an illusion, a very necessary illusion, but he describes that we're all living beings within the, the organism of God. So I experience that I have an I, as in I am, not the physical I, uh, I have a creative ability, I have an organism, and so on. But according to Martinus, then I am a micro-being within a macro-being, which is this earth. The earth is a micro-being micro within the, sol the solar system, and the solar system is a micro-being within the galaxy, and so on. And everything in creation is a micro-being within the organism of God. So actually, God is everything that exists, and God is therefore non-dual. God is just one. And we are actually, yeah, as it says in the Bible, we live and move and have our being in this one organism. But I didn't actually hear anyone talk about non-duality directly at that conference, not in the, in the things I heard. And did they, did they talk about God? No. Because that's what I I actually subscribe to the newsletter of this conference, uh, Sand. I think much of it sounds fascinating, but some time, and I might be unfair in that judgment, it seems to me that if it's they focus more on your own development as an individual, that I perhaps should meditate and get more developed or obtain a better life somehow, that it's more focused on yourself than on the way Martinus very much focuses on God in a scientific way. Yes, and that was certainly my impression, that people were very interested in their own processes, their own meditative practices, their own practice of mindfulness or yoga or whatever it is they were involved in. And in a in a way, it was self-centered. And I don't mean that to sound selfish, but it was um, it was focused on the self, one's own self. Of course, I'm making a gross assumption because there were 1,400 people there, so, and I didn't talk to all of them, far from it. But uh, by contrast, people at the vegetarian festival were focused on being kind to the animals, being kind to the planet, improving mankind's health. So their focus was more sort of external. What can we do to improve life for the animals on the planet? What can we do to prevent global warming? What can we do to reduce cancer and diabetes and uh, dementia and all sorts of really common problems in mankind? So there was a sort of, for me, if I could sum it up very briefly, there was an internal focus in SANS and there was an external focus in the vegetarian conference. That was my impression. It's only a very personal, um, subjective impression. Well, but it's very interesting for us to, to listen to. And it seems also logical if you just look at the titles. And certainly you can say that there's room for both of these directions. It might be a very necessary first step sometime to, to look into yourself and to try to find a spiritual dimension of life and... I was just thinking before we leave the SAND conference that as a Scandinavian, we certainly think of the United States as a very religious society in comparison to our secularized countries. And, and it might be more difficult perhaps to talk about God at a conference which does not want to have the, the traditional religious orientation. 
yes, and I really wondered what I should say because Martinez talks about the mystery of sexuality and I I claimed in my presentation that he solves the mystery and and that is that during a very pleasant sexual experience then you're actually experiencing the presence of God himself. And I thought, can one say that in America? But I, I said it anyway, so we'll see. <laughs> uh, and did you get any reactions afterwards? Well, the whole the whole setup was constructed so that there was no time for questions and answers in the lecture hall, but you could speak to people in the lobby afterwards. So then people gathered around and asked questions and made comments. And people sounded, the ones I talked to at least, sounded very interested. And one um, one man I met from Belgium, he uh, immediately went on to the Martinez Institute's homepage and read read what there was in Dutch and seemed to be very interested. That when I left him, he was going to read Levi's book, The Book of Life, Volume 5, because he was very interested in the the growth of the female or the feminine aspect in man and the growth of the masculine in women, which are, which was the subject of my lecture. So, so yeah, it's hard to judge, you know. Um, I talked to, I talked to people over meals. I talked to people in the pauses. So, but there was no sort of formal question and answer session after the lecture, which I would very much would have liked because then you can gauge your the response you're getting from the audience. But that that wasn't really possible. And what was your overall impression uh, of this conference as as a whole? It was a little overwhelming because, if you can imagine, fourteen hundred people in one lecture hall for the for some of the main things, and it was it's a lot of people in one place. But my overall impression was that people are really seeking; they're looking for answers. There was a lot of talk about getting enlightened and. Uh, one speaker said, hurry up and get enlightened. And I thought, yeah, how do you do that? <laughs> like it, like you could become enlightened just through some technique where Martinus describes it more as a very long uh, process of moral development over many, many lives. So, and I, I was reminded of how much Martinus's analysis have cleared things up for me personally, because I read a lot of alternative spiritual material when I was younger and um, I too was looking for initiation and a genuine personally experienced understanding of the laws of life and so on. But Martinez has made it very, very clear that the only way to that is through moral development. Of course, people can try to take shortcuts through meditation and so on, but some forms I stress some, not all, but some forms of med meditation can really, um, really unbalance you and give you meditation psychoses and so on, which we saw a lot of in the 60s and 70s when people were running off to uh, Indian gurus and becoming initiated very quickly. So um, Martinus describes this process of initiation as a very slow process over many lives and it it's means getting rid of every trace of animal consciousness within one's consciousness. In other words, one has to be totally humane in every circumstance of life. And of course, I'm not there yet. And most of us are not there yet. Christ was there. So parallel with this moral development is this de development of the sexual poles. So the feminine pole develops in men, the masculine pole develops in women. So, yeah, one one uh, young man asked me after my talk at the SAND conference if um, if Martinez said anything about sexuality growing. And he does. Martinez does say that sexuality grows. So I confirmed that. He looked very happy. And I said, but morality grows too, so that you you will won't have the heart to use your sexuality to to harm anybody else. So even though the sexual force doesn't get less, on the contrary, it grows, then the moral standard to regulate it or to regulate your behavior will also grow. And at the moment, there are a lot of problems because the two are not at the same level. Because, for example, if you can be unfaithful or if you can, for example, 
yeah, you can do various things with your sexual life that involve hurting other people, either children or partners or whatever. It's what he calls the zone of the unhappy marriages, isn't it? Yes, exactly. There are a lot of children that don't live with both parents, uh, so there are a lot of divorces, there are a lot of lonely people, a lot of people who are very confused, who don't feel that they fit in anywhere. They're in a kind of no man's land between being heterosexual and homosexual. They're, they don't feel they belong anywhere. And then there are people who have uh, feelings for their own sex or for both sexes, and there's an awful lot of confusion. And these things Martinus explains. He uses hundreds of pages to explain these things, so it's hard to do it in a few minutes, but he explains them basically through the growth of the opposite pole in one's consciousness. And you could read more about that in your translation, as you just mentioned, the translation of Volume 5 of The Book of Life. Yeah. Leave its bow, as it's called. And we could also refer to our earlier podcast, but it's a huge topic. So even if we do study it, even if we read his works, we certainly need to to reflect on this, I think, and, and to practice it. And one way of practicing it, of course, practicing our humane sides would be to consider what we do to our neighbors and what we do to, for example, the animals and to our body, to our microcosmos. And that's, of course, what your other conference was about. Yes, and I found it very moving because people were so passionate about reducing or completely stopping someday all killing of animals for food and for leather and so on. And um, there was such a positive atmosphere. And uh, I had two doctors uh, give lectures and they had done original research. Uh, one of the things that Martinus writes about in The Ideal Food is that our sense of taste has become an unreliable guide for us choosing the right food. He explains that we have what he calls basic energies in our consciousness, things like instinct and feeling, intelligence, memory, intuition, and so on. And instinct governs all automatic processes. And we're at a stage in evolution where instinct is degenerating. And instinct is what should guide us to the perfect food for ourselves at any given moment. But it's degenerating, and that has a lot of consequences. One of them being that we can choose food that's not ideal for us at all. So we can, for example, eat meat, which is a great burden for the organism. Uh, and these researchers I heard, they, you know, they, they have shown results that prove that, for example, meat eating is a very high indicator for cancer or uh, other lifestyle, lifestyle illnesses. So, yeah. I understand that there must have been a lot of presentations, a lot of scientific presentations. Is there any of it that you found particularly interesting? Yes, there was a doctor who, yeah, I was talking about the sense of taste that Martino says is unreliable. And there was a doctor there who said that he he got some of his patients to fast for for a certain length of time under medical supervision. And he found that after that fast, then their sense of taste was uh, had been regulated. He mentioned an example, for example, of a, a an extremely overweight man who had. St diabetes and various other illnesses he was in the in the queue for all the lifestyle illnesses you could imagine and he put him on a fast well first he tasted some vegan food which this man thought tasted horrible he didn't regard it as food at all and then he put him on a, a fast for a certain length of time and after the fast he gave him the same kind of food and this man said Oh, he was very glad the clinic had got a new cook because the food was so much better than what he tasted before. But it was actually the same. So so um, the sense of taste is something that can be changed. So I, I thought it was interesting that this researcher added some scientific data to what Martina says about the sense of taste being an unreliable guide and that it needs to be re-stabilized. <laughs> and if you compare... Martinez's book, The Ideal Food, and the other books that he wrote about 
about food and health. Uh, because Martinez wasn't a doctor, he didn't write a medical dissertation on nutrition. He wasn't a natural scientist, actually didn't study at all at any university, as we know. He, he conveyed what he saw yes. by using his intuition, his faculty of intuition. Yes. What do you think is Martinez's contribution to the area of nutrition right now compared to the other presentations that you heard? I think one thing that Martinez contributes that the others don't have is this idea about the organs and the cells and the smaller particles within the cells are actually living beings that experience life and create life within our organism. And that, for example, when we experience pain, it's a communication from living beings in the part of the organism that are suffering. And this has also consequences when we consume meat. When we kill an animal in order to eat it, then of course we're killing the whole animal and the organs die very quickly. But if we eat, for example, a liver or a heart or the muscles of an animal, then we also have to kill living beings within the microcosmos of the animal. So let's say we take a, a cow, it's been killed, and then we t take some of its muscles that uh, people regard as a good steak or whatever, then this um, the living beings that make up this muscle have also to be killed. And if you eat, eat the meat raw, then it has to be killed directly in a digestive system. And this is very, very hard for the digestive system. This is very, very heavy, and people feel very tired after a meal like that. This is one of the reasons why we've invented cooking and boiling and frying and baking and so on, that it kills these life units. He calls them, in in the, the ideal food, food, he calls them B life units or life units B. The, the actual nutrition in the, the meat or in any food is what he calls A life units or life units A. But in order to, to release those so that we can get some nutrition out of the food, whatever the food is, then these life units B have to be broken down. And that, that involves the killing of micro beings. So, so when you kill an animal in order to eat it, you're killing the animal itself, but then you're killing millions upon millions of micro beings within the animal as well. And they, even though they're much smaller, they have a consciousness and an ability to create life very much in the same way as we do. So that's an aspect I haven't seen anywhere else in nutritional literature. So you could say that his whole analysis of the microcosmos, or even the super microcosmos, as he says sometimes, is really unique in that sense. He described something at a level which actually is impossible to, to investigate with, with current natural scientific methods yeah that is that's true and the, the actual principle that everything is life as you said they're actually living beings that suffer when we make those mistakes yes and in a way the, martinus's description of the universe is that it consists of life within life within life within life for all etern eternity, in all infinity, there is nothing but life. So the idea of food as life units, rather than just substance. So he's, he's looking at the substance from the point of view of life, rather than looking at life from the point of view of substance. So I think that's one major difference between Martinus's view of nutrition and the ordinary scientist's view. It, it complements the ordinary scientist's view doesn't contradict it, but it complements it. Exactly, and perhaps there's even a bridge then between the overall spiritual dimension of the first conference that you attended and then this veg conference focusing on food because Martinez actually focuses on life and on the spiritual dimension being behind everything. Yes, yes, and actually... In the ideal food, he's written something which is 
I think is really difficult to understand, uh, and I'm still working on it, that that the actual nutrition in any food we consume is, is really spiritual in nature. He says it, it consists of a kind of energetic aura, but that's so far down in the microcosmos, so a lot of substance has to be digested in order for us to gain access to that. So if there wasn't this life, this energy in the substances that we consume, then we wouldn't be alive ourselves. I mean, we can't live on stones, for example. We need we need organic matter. We need uh, things that are alive. And did you give any concrete advice uh, on the conference on what people should eat, according to Martinez? <laughs> Well, Martinez advised keeping things very simple. He he talks about the ideal food at various stages in our evolution. So, in a sense, the ideal food for a lion or a tiger is raw meat, but it's really not the ideal food for us today. He says the ideal food for us today is what he calls coarse, coarse vegetarian food. That's things like grains and lentils and all sorts of pulses, uh, rice, potatoes, all sorts of root vegetables, which are quite coarse. And then the lighter vegetables uh, that are the sort of leafy greens and and a lot of fruit. So he says at the moment, that's the ideal food for us, that um, this um, food from all of these groups, these uh, seeds and pulses and grains and uh, coarse vegetables and leafy vegetables and fruit. But he says that in the future, we will become fruitarians. We will be able to live from fruit alone. But at the moment, our digestive systems are so coarse in the sense that we need fiber. We need the the uh, roughage that we get from these coarse of vegetarian products. So not many can live on fruit alone at the moment, but that will be the future. We could perhaps say that those those organs are more robust now and they are living beings too according to Martinez. So in that sense, we should adapt to what's good for them. Yes, and I think this is reflected in the nutritional scientific view that we need a lot of roughage. We need a lot of fiber in order to keep things moving, in order to keep things going. So I think Martinez's view and the scientific view actually support each other very well here. And certainly if there's anything that has surprised me is how quickly this seems to spread right now in Scandinavia uh, about the importance of, of plant-based food. People start serving it in schools even. Even athletes talk about living on plant-based food uh, rather than meat eating and it has just increased. It's increasing all the time. Yes, and I met an athlete in at the Veg Conference, the Veg Festival. He was a boxer, funnily enough. A big, strong man and uh, he liked to to show that you could be a top athlete on a totally vegan diet. So he was also a stand-up comedian. So I, uh, it was great fun meeting him. He was one of the one of the um, masters of ceremonies. He introduced a lot of these researchers and so on who were going to speak. I was surprised he was a boxer, a vegan boxer. I said, "Yeah, you." take care of the animals, but you don't mind hitting human beings? And he said, yeah, there are enough human beings on the planet. <laughs> we, we have to look after the animals. <laughs> but he he was joking, of course. Yeah, you seem to have had quite a lot of fun, actually, at this conference. We can see that. Uh, but you talked about Martinez, and certainly his advice seemed to be quite consistent with other presentations. But then he has this spiritual dimension as well. Uh, so how did people react to that? How did they receive your presentation? Well, I can only say, if you talk about the spiritual dimensions, then Martinus talks about the kind of karma we can get from eating meat. He talks about the fact that by eating animals, uh, and he includes fish in this, then, uh, then uh, we are unnaturally shortening their lives where of course they have an eternal life so they will reincarnate so no one can actually die in the absolute sense but we're certainly shorten, shortening their present physical life and that leaves you open to also having your own life shortened in a very catastrophic way 
and that can result in things like accidents. And, uh, you know, as a, again, there was no time for a question hour after the lecture, and no one took up that that uh, aspect of it in the in the lobby afterwards. But um, I had thirty copies of the ideal food with me, and they were all just snapped up very quickly. So I think people can read more about this themselves. But of course, it's it's not a usual thing to say at a vegetarian conference that meat eating is in some way connected with accidents and natural catastrophes. I think people start talking a lot now about the need to take care of our planet, the need to live in a more sustainable way. It could be clothing, lifestyle, traveling, food, all sorts of aspects. Yes, and I must say I was rather impressed by how much vegan food there was in San Francisco, how much focus there was on leather alternatives, alternatives to leather, how much focus there was on the environment and how you had to be very careful about sorting sorting uh, waste and so on. Of course, there was a lot of focus on not using more water than you needed because they've, they've had hardly any rain, rain there for five years. So I, I experienced that area, the whole area as being very conscious of the environment. So that was very encouraging. I understand that. And it's, it really strikes me that it, it must be a very historic moment. Or you must be the first person who actually talked about Martinez in California. I don't think so. No, I think Moens Müller book at the Esalen Institute, I think. I'm not completely sure about this, but I think he did. That was a former uh, co-worker of Martinez, we should say. Yes, and Ole Tergelsen has been in Los Angeles and Seattle. So um, the last time was about 35 years ago. And no one's been in San Francisco before, so so that was new. <laughs> so I, so I, I did break some new ground. <laughs> yeah, you certainly did. Do you think, what do you think, will Martinez get popular in San Francisco? Well, let's see. But I think it has a chance because... I experienced a mentality there that's very open, uh, that's very progressive, that's very interested in solutions. People want a better environment. Uh, of course, they're living with a terrible drought. They're very conscious that that there is an imbalance in nature. There's There's so much focus, at least as far as I could see, on practical aspects of neighborly love, such as reducing the killing of animals that I think they have a level of morality that could maybe be open for this world picture. It's hard to know. And of course, San Francisco is a fairly big place so, and all types of people are represented. So it's hard to say. It's hard to say. And we know that Providence always has a plan for everything. So I certainly think this must have been a very, very important journey and that this was really a pioneer visit that you made. I hope that you enjoyed it personally. I know that you also visited friends and, and so on. And I think that we would like to publish a few photos on our website as well, martinezcosmologypodcast.com. If you're interested, you can have a look what you experienced and, and what you saw. Yes, I can perhaps add that in addition to these two conferences, and I gave a, a presentation for a small group of women my host in San Francisco gathered together some of her friends and I gave a little lecture about Martinez in her home. And I met up with some of these women a second time where we we solved all the problems in the world. <laughs> um, in a cafe, it took us two and a half hours in a cafe overlooking the Pacific Ocean. So it was very nice. <laughs> no, seriously, we... Um, we discussed, discussed a lot of things and they'd had a week to think about the things I'd said the first time. So it was very nice to continue and uh, they had a lot of questions. So uh, I think that sounds very interesting. And I actually very much would like to to dedicate another podcast episode to the topic of women and perhaps talking about a feminine perspective on Martinez's cosmology. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. But that would be another episode. 
I think it's time to wrap it up for today. So congratulations again, Mary, on this fantastic journey. It was absolutely wonderful to hear about your experiences. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Over and out from Copenhagen. Over and out from Stockholm. <laughs>